Hello everyone, it's Slav here and today we are again with a band, let's say control, but it's more of a mid-range deck, right? Because we have a lot of uh, high value cards that we want to hit and just uh, turn the game into our direction. We also get to use Tamiyo, one of my favorite cards. Basically this deck has a lot of cards that I really like and they didn't find a great home so far. So, uh, first of all, uh, what the deck is about? We are basically ramping into Storm the Festival and the rest of the deck is like a lot of good 5 drops because we want to hit them with Storm the Festival. How it went, you will see in the games. <laughs> uh, it can really range from amazing and like jaw dropping play to to the other ones that you will also see. So I encourage you to watch the games and I think you won't regret. So. Uh, our big five drops. Uh, basically, we have Elspeth that is okay, but the biggest ones I, I have noticed like Worship Ward, you man, this card just wrecks in this deck. This is such a powerful card. Not only you have a big creature that can trade with everything, not only you get three life, you also get a, a Rhino Warrior token, whatever, uh, that stays after you trade it and after you gain life. That's really huge. And the trample, don't underestimate it because we are aggressive deck in a way. When we go off, we want to kill the enemy with our big creatures. So sometimes this trample, except against something like, you know, Lolf with spiders that can block forever, like it really makes a difference. And you can cast it for Blitz as well, if you want to kill something like Planewalker. And then you cycle it into next card, so that's really good. So this Rhino is a big star for the deck. Like, this is the first deck that I really think it shines, like, as it should. Other than this, we have my other favorite card, Tamio. And you will see in the video how amazing she can be. Like, I really want to make many decks with Tamiyo because I think it's an amazing planewalker, especially like the stop ability. It, it destroys enemy gameplay so hard and it gives you so much time. And at some point you can just go for the minus and double the value, basically. So if you cast her for 5 mana, you can take other planewalker like Ren or uh, Workshop War Chief, but of course you lose Tamiyo. So optimally you want to go for plus 1 then you gain time after playing Tamiyo, so basically it's like a wear removal. And then next turn you can go minus five and still keep Tamiyo, add more blockers, and suddenly enemy needs to deal with your whole board that defends the Tamiyo. And in the end, even if he manages somehow to go through it, like, okay, he just killed one loyalty plane walker and he probably lost half of his board to do it. <laughs> so that's really powerful play. Of course we have Ren and Seven, because it's great synergy with all the lands, we need a lot of lands for Storm the Festival, and of course it has flashback, so if you've been in, into the graveyard you are also happy, so Ren is really good here as well. You also have quite a lot of lands with this deck, so the token is very huge, which really helps against any kind of red deck, and everything that has damage based removal, like this token is really hard to remove. Okay, we have Emperors, because Emperor is a very good card and it helps you survive until your 5 mana drops. Okay, and for the Courier Briefcase, to be perfectly honest, I was not extremely happy with this card. I felt that it's pretty hard to activate it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it, it just seems to be like a sacrifice at one mana of any color and create a token. Uh, this draw three cards rarely comes into play and usually by then you have Storm the Festival or like Plane Walkers and you have add other things to do with your mana. And usually you use treasures that to yeah, like you know ramp into Storm the Festival of or five mana drop. So I just don't exactly felt this card. So it might maybe be removed and uh, replaced by something else. This is, of course, a decent ramp. Innkeeper is always good. I really like the Stomper. I think it's a great card. Uh, for the Lagrella, I have left the games that will show how little I knew about the card. <laughs> so, uh, if you like learning and making fun of bad plays, that's definitely the video and the game for you. It will be somewhere in the middle, probably. Uh, so, yeah, I have, especially after one of the games, 
watch two videos on YouTube, how this card works. So for anyone that knows, you can just skip this part. And for anyone that doesn't, basically this is Brutal Qatar that can also exile your cards on top of the enemy card. So basically you cannot exile more than one creature with this on the enemy side. So basically you exile enemy card and your for example, Innkeeper that has good ATB effect, so you can double. You can also like bounce Stomper, so you get additional land, something like this. Or you can just only remove enemy creature. And remember, if you remove a token, it dies permanently. So this can be a removal. It's just Brutal Cutter, right? Uh, with more toughness and more upsides. So, uh, pretty decent card as well. Also something we want to hit with uh, Elspeth, because as you can see, we don't have extremely a lot of three drops. We basically have four Stompers and two Langrilla, and that's what you want to hit. Sometimes you might fish for borrowed time, but that's pretty desperate. But sometimes you are desperate with this deck, so no. Okay, going into like the matchups. I have felt that it's pretty hard to survive like early game of this deck, but man, when you get going with the storm the festivals like the fun is insane and you will see in the games like how high we can go and not even be close with being done with all the value that we have in the deck so yeah i i think this is this deck is definitely fun and i would play it with uh, with it much more because it's, it's just so fun when it works and you have so much value like war chief workshop war chief this card really is great and playing it Especially like for Blitz is so fun when you get this all this value, you get the token, you draw cards and then you stone the festival, like everything is great. So yeah, uh, if you like this kind of decks, I really encourage you to try this. And uh, regarding like the win rates and all of this, I was hovering around 50%, but I think this is like one of the better versions for Band. And I think the like big average on the deck is like 57%. And that's like, you, you know, over 200 games or something like this. So this is actually a, one of the best versions of Band, Band right now. And you can clearly see, when you watch the video, I think you can see the raw power behind this deck. And definitely it's hard contender against any kind of slower deck. So our biggest problem will be against super aggressive decks like Boros and Mono White, I guess. But Mono White, that doesn't seem as scary. I think Boros is the biggest problem. So you need to get correct cards and the correct time and ramp into like your big cards as well. When you land one War Chief, usually you can stabilize quite a lot unless enemy has perfect draw and then you cannot really do much. Mm -hmm. But that's the game, right? So yeah, a good deck. Uh, try it. You, you should like it. I liked it. That's the short review. Okay, and as always, if you like the videos, if you like the channel and everything we are doing here uh, don't forget to subscribe it really helps and i've been seeing a really nice growth lately and that's all thanks to you guys so that's really cool of you and i do re appreciate it so i'm trying my best with cool decks and i hope you you will like them as well and i i like this one more than i thought i will so uh, let's go into the games and i'm pretty sure you will enjoy those uh, especially the first one i think it was really fun so uh, without further ado enjoy okay it seems that we actually have a legit draw this time so let's start let's start what the mana we need uh, we need double green for the stompler so let's start with this. I think Boseju, we'll see what the enemy is playing. Asper. I honestly think we just cast Boseju. We might need more colors later. I'm not sure, but that, that, that's the play I went with. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. That, that's the play. I have chosen it consciously. Oh man, that's so good for us. We don't care about this creature at all. And let's go with our Stompler and then Elspeth comes into play. Okay, do we go for blue? Like, if we get something blue, we probably really want it, right? So let's take it. We, we don't want to be reliant on treasure and we have enough on the, or of the other colors. I do believe so. And he tapped out, which is pretty sweet. Okay, I don't think he can kill Elspeth easily. So this one is blue. Let's start with this one. 
as a green. Okay, you need to be really careful about this. Man, we could storm the festival. But frankly, I think Elspeth is just better. Like it's such a good card. Like, do we risk it? You know what? It will attack already. You know what? That's the content play, right? You are here for the big storms. You are big here for, for the big storms. Okay, that's why I didn't want to play. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I will take it. To be honest, I actually freaked up. It should have been land. Land is better than this. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I'm dead inside right now. I'm seriously dead inside. We could have the Elspeth. I hope at least you, you had fun with, with, with the Storm the Festival. The best card in the deck. <laughs> Heads down. We paid 6 mana and we got a 2 drop. By the way, a land draw. Man, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. But, but we have Earthpath right now. Enemy has only one mana, so we know what? What is this crap? It's probably an underray, right? Let's keep the blue mana and let's go for the forests. Oh man, do we go for the... What can we go for? Flying. Frank Vigilance, he can connive though. Do we go for the minus 3 for some value? I don't think we do. Okay, let's make our Tumbler cooler. I like cool cards. And I think it's flying, because it has Vigilance already. So let's make this Tumbler into a big angel. He will be flying with all the angels and Valkyries as a plant dinosaur. That, that's the game plan for this match. <laughs> At least we have that. Yeah, like sure. That's great. That's great. But on the bright side, it will take him quite a while to kill the Elspeth. And by quite a while, I mean two turns exactly. Maybe three. We, we can put the counter on Innkeeper. So maybe we go into the storm the festival again. Enemy is keeping some mana. What is it for? What is it for? I'm not sure. Let's play some lands. We can cast it, right? It's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we lack one, okay. That's good to know. So he might have another vanishing verse, I guess. That's her hard decision. I don't want to lose Elspeth. I want her in my field of view, you know? Is Blitz good? Blitz. How Blitz works? When this creature... So we draw a card and we can kill Kaito. You know what? If anything works, I think this is the play. Like, we at least need to try to kill Kaito. I hope he doesn't have the perfect answer. We have Trample, so... I think we just attack with this guy and give flying to the innkeeper. Man, like, it feels like vanishing there so much. Right. You know what? It's not the worst. It's not the worst. So, this one gets flying right now. And we get to draw a card. And and we still get the Rhino, so you know. We get the value. And next turn we can storm. We need to pressure enemy so much that he needs to react during his turn. The fact that he has Kaito drawing cards is horrible for us. Like, seriously horrible. And thanks to this he can draw so many removers that he can go one for one. Man, this turn the festival completely wrecked us for the whole game. Like, imagine if we had Elspeth one turn earlier, when enemy couldn't answer her. He was tapped out completely. Yeah, and we could go for the minus three then, so we would have another creature with shield, probably. 
But you know, enough ranting. I'm ranting too much, I know. I know. We should probably storm the festival, but I want to kill Kaito so hard. I hate this card, I want to kill it. First, do we actually just smork him? Man, I'm I'm not great at those decisions. We could just go for the face. Man, maybe we just go for the face. I don't like we cannot kill Kaito, so he will just keep drawing cards. And I think that's enough to force him into playing something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, finally, finally some cards. Thank you, game. I really appreciate you, game. So we could get stuff, but then we lose our Tamiya. So the correct play would be to get rid of the Rafin. Okay, this is how the deck is supposed to work. <laughs> that's how that's how it was supposed to look at the first fest storm the festival. But you know what? We are slowly getting somewhere. Okay, that is not perfect for you, I think. You're good. And we can uh, tap the warden. Oh, that's a very good draw. That's a freaking good draw. So, do we kill Kaito or just go for the face? Uh, let's count the mana. 3, 6, 9, 10. Oh, so it's Aether Storm the Festival or the other stuff. Whenever this attacks. So this has to attack, right? You know what? It might be just Elspeth. Do we go for Elspeth? Man, so many decisions with this deck. You can play it so differently if you want. I think we attack. Yeah, we attack face probably. Now we don't need to. If we bounce this with Fading Hope, we can just get back the Elspeth. We are past. And make a creepy copy pasta of Elspeth. That's not scary at all. And I will protect them. We fading hope this warden because it's awful creature. And let's go for the good hit. That's not a good hit, but it, it is enough for the storm. So let's go, baby. Another storm. And more and more planewalkers. Sure, I like the value. Guys, I think we are slowly doing this. <laughs> I think we have we are onto something. Uh, let's make some big guys. We should probably attack first before giving all of this information to the enemy. But you know what? At this rate, we have so much value that maybe we can go for the like card advantage game. If he casts it. It's not great. And we can tap it with Tamiyo. Like, he has a lot of targets. He can kill Tamiyo with the ninja, which is unfortunate. And he can use Rafin to kill something if he kills the token. But he just needs to do so many things at the same turn. And the reach on the Ren token is actually very important. It forces additional play. And he has only, what, 7 mana? That's not correct attack. Oh, unless he connives. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. It's fine. To be honest, I would go for Tamiyo. Tamiyo seems more scary right now. Earthbirth is basically one token. We don't need rifling. Vigilance doesn't matter because the Rafin has flying and Ninja is unblockable. Okay. So, even more, right? I think even more now. So, let's draw some stuff. I heard plants are good. Okay, we got another storm, the festival. We play the land that he sees. Okay. We definitely Tamiyo the Rafin. Maybe it's indestructible, but it won't be able to attack my friend. Like, you can see that we are just overpowering the enemy. Do we go for the Blitz? We can storm uh, three, six, nine. We can't. So we actually go for the blitz. It also gives additional, like rhino when it dies, and the card 
advantage is pretty decent. We don't care about planewalkers. Maybe the 10 10 was a mistake, but I think like it, it takes one of the blockers. So next turn he's super pressured. And we get to draw cards. We have stormed the festival, so all we need to do is just pressure him like crazy. If he sweeps somehow, we use the storm festival anyway. So let's just ramp and get more lands because I don't think we have enough. We don't have enough lands. So enemy needs a huge play right now. Especially with all the tramplers. He also needs to kill Tamiya, so that will cost him one blocker. I think the big problem that he made, uh, like that blunder, was uh, not killing Tamiya because Rafin is like his biggest creature. So when it, when it doesn't untap, it's pretty horrible for him. So you got rid of the Planewalkers, now what do you do with the rest of the board? I'm not saying he cannot, like there are cards like Devastating Master, Doomscar, but so far I don't see him and uh, like using any of those cards. Like we have 10-10 Trample already. Okay, good game. Good game, my friend. So let's go full mode <laughs> for the fanzies. Wow, that was another one of them. <laughs> so, sure, we'll just hopefully draw some cards someday. Uh, let's just smorg the enemy. That's how we play. We just make a insanely huge creatures and hope it's enough. Like, it's just a, way too much stuff. He did the perfect box, but this one is just 5 damage to your face and even the innkeeper. Man, we actually won this game, but... This first storm, the festival. Imagine if it was good, how we would go off earlier. But that was fun. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When you hit like Warchief and Tamio, it feels so hard. And Warchiefs are, it feels like they are the biggest fuel for the deck because there are so much value packed into one card. Even with Blitz, like you have instant board presence. So they are really good here. You know what? I do enjoy this hand. I do enjoy this hand. I think we need to be very careful with the briefcase. We probably want to draw three cards with this kind of hand. You know, you will see. You will definitely see. Is this green? I think it is green. We need generally more green in this deck. We can always fade in hope, but I don't think we will. Treasures are so important here. I think... Next turn it will be briefcase, so we get life, we can sacrifice it if we have to. Yep, yeah, enjoy your one damage. Oh, a tap snarl! Are you a snarl player? And you get punished for it. You know what? It means that we are <laughs> for the smirk time. Right now we can definitely just raise the enemy. We need to be extremely careful with uh, the treasures. This is base. Look how mana screwed we are. This uh, one five mana play needs to carry out us throughout the game, basically. Do we want to do it at the cost of one treasure? Man, I think we just take it. It might have been a mistake. I'm starting to regret some things. But I'm greedy and. I want to do it. Okay, that's a land. I wanted, okay, so I wanted untap land and play the war chief. That was my thinking, but it didn't work out. So I think, what, man, it hurts so much, but I think that's what we do. Because this gives us some permanent value. So we basically invest this huge thingy, like this whole treasure thing into protecting our plane walker that will give us some value every turn unfortunately we have to get rid of one of them probably man they just always have everything i never play the game when they don't have cavalier into raichu this is basically like perfect draw on their side oh man and we cannot even hit our lance 
I'm not extremely happy about how the game is going so far, but I think we have options still. So this will be fighting hope on the initiate, most likely. So then he needs to replay the initiate, it loses all the stacks and it's not great anymore. Aspirant. Okay, we'll see where the counter goes. I'm not sure where it should. Okay. So we could get a uh, right to back, right? Then he doesn't get the training and he attacks for 3 only and he needs to spend the full turn for another Raichu. You know what? It's not the worst. We don't get the Scry. So that sucks. But other than this, it's the most mana efficient play we can make. Yep, and with 3 innkeepers we can heal quite a lot. Okay, that's actually not the worst. Man. <laughs> <laughs> for serious for serious can we hit an ant on curve for once but we can heal 3 a turn right and we can chomp block every single turn let's preserve our treasures after the rhino we don't have any value so we need to be really careful about it yep that's a smork smork in your face let's see what the, where the counter goes good choice so five damage here four to the face fine oh now we get the anta plant man like it's <laughs> like this is not my day i every single game in multiple decks i've been playing to get day off camera like i'm getting uh, the tap plant moment i need the anta plant and w when i have all the mana i need and this doesn't matter i always get the anta plant but yeah it's, it's just me. <laughs> I will write about those things forever. You can see how much life gain we have. Like, we are back to 15, which is really sweet. Okay, Rhino. Rhino, you need to carry us, us throughout this game. And Raiju will be super hard. We will double block it if we have to. I think we even triple block. Man, like, this is ridiculous. Like, he got every card that he needed this game. Turn 1, then Sunrise, then into Raichu, into Aspirant, in, into Brutal Katara, and some removal on the way. Oh man, that's so... What can we even hit at this point? I will invest only one of them. So we get maximum value in case we finally hit something. Sure, smork in the face, as you, as you always do. Not sure what exactly we hit, but let's try. Langrella. You know what? It actually works. And just for you guys, I actually watched two videos how this works. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully I finally will know. Okay, so we get rid of this stuff, I think. Then we get the war chief, right? So it's best. Do we do we target? No, we, we don't target our own. We just get rid of enemy. So it's basically a brutal Qatar with shield right now. And you know what? I think that we are healing quite a lot. I don't think we go for the briefcase here. Man, if we have if we win this game, this will be extremely cr Sure! Another Qatar! And I'm not losing my mind, you are losing oh man. I'm so out of here. This is ridiculous. Okay, so Honestly, that's not a great hand, but, but, we are on the play, and that's literally the reason we will keep this. Because on the play, we can ramp into 5 drops pretty nicely, and our 5 drops are super strong. Man, this deck always draws lands every single turn forever. Like, I get we have total, like, 25 lands and 2 tangling thingies. But man, it just feels like we are always getting flooded and what's funny, very often we still win, somehow. Okay, that's, that's a 5 drop. Believe it or not, we have cheaper cards in this deck. We go for green. Uh, because we want to be ready for the festival and we don't have other green. And let's go for blue. 
because this is the land we are lacking. That's why we have the basic island in the deck outside of Triumphs. And right now we will have 5 mana and that's huge. That's really huge. Oh man, we, we have even more stuff. We can pay this one with green. Okay, let's actually see what the enemy is playing because I w didn't care at all so far. I think it's Ren. Ren is good here because it makes a huge as creature. Sorry for the language. And it ensures that we can put all the lands and keep drawing them. Yep, that's a ramp. Basically, I don't see like black color for the enemy. So generally, red cards have problems with high toughness and high power. Okay, that's that's one of the best draws in the game for you. But we will get there. But the menace is like the difference. All the difference and we cannot activate the stomper because we don't have enough uh, stuff, you know. Okay, so what is the play? What is the play here? I think this one. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think we go with a Gandu, to be honest. I think it's a bit too slow and we want runs every turn. We definitely... Man, we want one more run to activate the Stompler. I guess we could bounce this and this, but it's not great, to be honest. Okay, so how does it exactly work? Exile any number of target creatures by different players. I'm not sure if we need to exile our own token, which would suck. Okay, I still think the correct play would be this. With uh, added cost. Then we cannot play the Innkeeper, which a bit sucks, but we get rid of the Arsonist, we don't attack with this, and enemy needs to deal with 6 mana Planewalker. It means that we have to block pretty much, so he has a lot of mana. But you know what, if he only makes the token, I might not block. He didn't even attack, that's great. That's really good. Okay, definitely this. Uh, what do we do? We want to get rid of the token, right? We could get another Ren. But honestly, I think we want to get rid of this guy because this is the only Sky one. I think we play like this. Because then we can go with the maximum like value. Yep. Oh, what? What, what, what? I, I don't use these cards. You, you need to excuse me. <laughs> like, I thought that's how... Exile any number of other target creatures. I want to target too. Man, I suck at YouTubing. I thought you can you can target this one, but I guess you can't. So I guess we submit two. Is this any number of other target different players? Oh man, I suck. It's different players. So in in this mode, it's always the same number. It's still fine, you know. But I still suck. <laughs> I still suck. <laughs> man, I misplayed it so hard. Sorry guys for this, I literally never used this card so far in my life, I only see it used. I thought you can just bounce and uh, do more creatures, but it seems that you can target only two of them. And that's enough, because you can target tokens and you could get additional value for your cards, right? But yeah, not the best display of my skills, but hopefully we all learned something. Oh man, this is definitely a challenging hand. Worst case, we can use the treasure to use the stomper, so I think it's okay. I think we can play it out. Like, we will somehow get it, even if we get mana screwed, and if we don't, we are in very good position. And we drew a land, so we are actually in very good position. I think we need to hit another one, right? 
No, not really. But another one would mean the storm, storm the festival with ramp. Man, this is this might be our godly draw. Man, we are drawing like a madman. And sure, let's bait. Smart. Do you want to prevent this one damage? Please do. Please kill this. And he did not. It's fine. So the worst case, Stomper gets gets dieted. But we still get the land, we still get the life. And what do we want? So let's think. Mana is important in this deck. We have triple white, triple green. I think it's enough for the time being. So let's make sure that we can cast Tamiya. We probably hit her from with the Storm the Festival. Man, if we if we whiff and hit five lands, I will cry. I will cry in my corner. But then we ramp into flashback, I guess, so it's something. Go blank. Definitely my friend. Okay, and now now the important part. Yeah, like we know what we are doing, right? It's the play. So we will have five mana, six one. I know what you want, and don't worry, I will do what you want. <laughs> it, it will be epic, or it will be super sucky, <laughs> we will see. Let it storm, let it storm. Oh no, it's four lots, <laughs> it's four lots again. I will cry in my corner. Okay, it's layer of the Hydra at least. I, man, Tamiya would be better at this point. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, enemy has hook for two. So let's make the samurai. If he has the hook, he needs to play it. I'm go. I'm going to cry after this storm. Man, <laughs> it could be so epic. At least we hit the emperor. You know what? It's not the worst. It could have been worse. And I think enemy just regrets casting Go Blank uh, with uh, Storm the Festival in the graveyard right now. So that's what you get for playing uh, random cards. Like sometimes you hit and it looks awesome. Sometimes you hit four lands in and the Plane Walker, which seems to be the most usual case to be honest. <laughs> for some freaking reason. And you know what? We will still win. Yep. See, told you, this island will be important. Uh, no lifelink for you, my friend. And so enemy can go for three. Let's go like this. Man, I'm such a freaking dummy. Can you freaking believe it? I was sure that we, we are playing lands on curve and we have already seven. I, I didn't even check this one. So that's that's definitely a mistake. It should be on the Samurai, because it's like the strongest creature here, except Stomper. Okay, and Tamio is out. That that hurts. Not gonna lie. But enemy still needs to solve the other problems. So while the vampire is tapped, I think we just go for the lair. Three. So it's three, five power. Yeah, I think it is. No. Okay, so we pay one mana and we do it for like this. Because that's the maximum damage that we can get. And you know what? I want to make sure that the enemy doesn't have anything in the board. Because this makes his next turn very awkward. He cannot meet hook and layer of the Hydra is also very big problem for him so it's what yep enjoy your 11 damage so if we draw a land and even if we don't layer of the hydra kills him on its own on its own mid hook cannot kill the stomper he needs to kill this and then we can just make another creatures okay that's really good for him but is it enough i think we can kill everything right we activate the lair Huh, this will be interesting. I think we just activate the Hydra and kill Lorf with everything. So he's basically in the same situation as before. We go for five, right? No six, three, five. Yep. 
again until we smirk him out of this game. So what he wants to block? Man, if we block the, if we get first side to the innkeeper, it's actually <laughs> decent. Enemy will have what? Hook for four. So that's not enough as well. We attack with everything. If we attack his face, what is the difference? Then he can make more spiders, so that's not what we want. So in his place he wants to jump. He probably won't block them, right? I think we'll do it like this. So the innkeeper starts to be a problem. So he needs to block one of them at least. Then he can save Lorf. It's it's hard decision. Like this way he can block one of them and get Lorf uh, saved. She will make new spiders. So that seems like a bad idea. I think we have to do it like this. So right now he can protect Lorf, but then he loses everything. And he's at one. And that's not the position you really want to be uh, against the lair. He can field of ruin it. Maybe we should kill the Lorf in the end. I'm not sure, but him getting to one HP is really tempting. Okay, and he will make spiders, right? So then we activate the Hydra, because it, it really helps. He killed his own uh, Lorf, basically. And now, now we can do interesting stuff. For example, activating Lair for one. Because right now, that's all it takes to kill him. Okay, and now the question. Do we want to save the lair? I think we do. I think it's good enough. So right now, we have Planewalker. We have one creature that kills him and we have one land creature that kills him. So we have so many things that we can do and on top of this, we have very good cards that can follow up. Oh man, the Lolf City. I will show you what happens when the sun Maybe, I think we, we can just go with the storm, right? Because it's get, oh, a trampler. That's a trampler. So, only removal saves him, right? You know what? We are going with this. And he has something. It's Infernal Grasp, right? But he cannot cast Infernal Grasp. Yep. Man, that was so close. I think in the end this was the right decision. And we have four of the War Chiefs, so everything with Trample and Haze will just kill him on spot. But yeah, he, he put a really good fight.